Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear Recodon user and prospect, here you see a full functional Recodon model of a clutch system in a startup procedure. In this model, the diaphragm spring is introduced as a full flexible body. That means it is a finite element body. In the next video sessions, I will show you in different steps how to build up such a Recodon model from scratch. First, we have to create bodies or import CAT data to get the desired geometry. Second, those bodies should be constrained to each other by joints and we bring in forces and external loads. Third, we even mesh one of those parts to generate a finite element body in our multi-flexible body dynamic software Recordine. To generate a model from scratch, at first a new model must be initiated. In that we will import some CAD data in our case. That is easy to do by file, import, we change the filter to step, search for our step file to open. In the lower message window, we see the progress of the imported data. And in the view above, we see shortly after the imported geometry. As those coordinate systems, which symbolize the center markers of the bodies are quite big, we reduce the size a bit. And in the next steps, all the bodies should be constrained to each other with the help of the recordant joints. After the cut import, all parts have to be constrained to each other. I will show exemplarily at different positions how the constraining will be fulfilled in Recordine where two bodies are linked together. Let's start with the area of the paddle. It must be constrained to the reference system, the ground, here the background, at this pivot point. In reality, the paddle would be linked to the chassis. To do this, we choose from the library above the revolute joint and check for the appropriate option. Then we have to click the first body, the ground in the background, the second body, the pedal, the position we will get from the snap capabilities of the geometry and the direction of the rotation axis we could derive from the normal of this phase. A second revolute joint should be done between the pedal and this link at this position and the direction we will get a swell from the face. To fix the pedal pad to the pedal, we choose a fixed joint with the right option and click for the first part, the pedal, the second part, the pedal pad, the position. For a fixed joint, no information for a direction is needed. Now the area of the pedal is constrained in the right manner and we look for the links on the other side. Here this link has to be connected to the ground. Let's choose again the revolute joint and repeat the procedure as before. First body ground, the link a second body, the position and the direction. Those two links 
should be connected to each other. Here we use a so-called primitive joint with the right option. The procedure is always the same. First body, second body, position and the direction. An inline joint takes only away two degrees of freedom instead of a revolute joint which takes away five degrees of freedom. Such primitive joints are very often used to avoid redundant constraints. Last but not least, we connect this gray link to the fork with the use of a spherical joint. We check the right option, the first body, the second body and the position. As well a revolute joint does not need any information about a direction. There must be done some more joints, but for this video it should be enough and we will jump to the next step to bring in forces and expressions for the inputs.